So let us consider a scenario where uh, an organization is registering its users to a web portal. So the messages would be coming in uh, with the HTTP protocol and uh, there will be a system boundary. So beyond the boundary, we will be storing the messages onto the database. So uh, first the uh, user will invoke the web portal and then that request would uh, go to WSO2 ESB or the uh, ESB component inside EI and then uh, EI will transform the message into a JMS message and store onto the message broker so that uh, the flow will end here so the user will not be blocked by the internal processings so the call will immediately return and after that in the offline so EI will get the message from the ESB and invoke the data services and store the message information onto the database let's see how we can implement this scenario using WSO2 EI because let's create the databases and prepare databases for the scenario so I am using my SQL for this. I am going to create a schema called corporate DB in my SQL space. And then I am creating a table called customer inside that uh, created database. and then I am creating a table called company so this is for two types of messages actually there will be records uh, for different companies and different customers so we will be separately storing them so if you see the company database so you can see separate. some entries and customer table has some entries See how we can prepare WSO2 EI for the scenario. So first uh, download WSO2 EI product and unzip it. And uh, then into the lib folder you need to copy the MySQL connector jargon. So this is the JDBC driver we use to connect to the MySQL database. So you can go to the bin folder and run wso2.integrator.sh script so that uh, wso2 ei will be started in integrator profile after service successfully started you will see the management console url and click on it and log into the management console by using default admin admin username and password so let's uh, see how we can create a data source first so go to configure data sources and uh, fill this form so name would be corporate db and uh, so the database engine will be mysql and uh, then automatically they pick up the jdbc configurations so you need to modify it to point to the correct uh, database name and uh, first and port and then you need to mention username and password in my case root and root and you can test the connection and create the data source.